A Donetsk court has sentenced three foreign mercenaries to death after they pleaded guilty to charges of preparing a coup in Donbass. The foreigners have been glorified in the Western media for fighting for Ukraine. A very warm welcome. This is RT International with the latest world news headlines. It's good to have you with us. Now, three captured foreign mercenaries, two British and one Moroccan, have been sentenced to death by a court in Donetsk. That's after they pleaded guilty to charges of plotting a coup there. Artis Roman Kozarov has the latest from outside the courthouse. The Supreme Court of the Donetsk People's Republic sentenced uh, three foreign mercenaries, um, that's uh, two Britons and uh, one uh, uh, Moroccan uh, fighter to uh, death. And uh, now it took the judge at least uh, two hours to read the verdict. And uh, there were uh, uh, there were multiple uh, charges in question, uh, including mercenarism, committing crimes aimed at seizing and holding power by uh, force, as well as undergoing uh, training aimed at carrying out uh, terrorist activities uh, here on the territory of the Donetsk uh, People's uh, Republic. They have been convicted uh, to death, and according to uh, local laws, uh, the execution will be carrying out by uh, uh, shooting. Now, uh, according to the uh, law, um, uh, th that was defending uh, the three uh, mercenaries in question, uh, they will appeal uh, the decision. Now, if uh, the appeal goes uh, through and if they're pardoned by the head of the Donetsk People's uh, Republic, then their sentence will be commuted to 25 years to life. And uh, uh, they have at least a month to carry out their, their appeal. Earlier, the three mercenaries were dubbed heroes in the Western media for fighting for Ukraine in the Donbass city of Mariupol. But the prisoners have had a change of heart since being taken into custody, as Artis Morad Gaziev explains. No one knows for sure how many foreign mercenaries have been killed or captured in Ukraine. Kiev keeps that a secret, probably to avoid scaring away war tourists or cannon fodder. It's totally different in a full-scale war. Um, my experience, and this is the first time I've had artillery, first time I've had grad, um, and first time I've been in a full-scale uh, war. And it is disorganised, it's uh, unpleasant, it's grim. Don't be, don't be duped into a war that's not, like, not a war that you should be fighting for. Like, um, for myself, like, look, at, look at myself, like, I've been here two months. Not once has Zelensky mentioned or talked about my case or tried to help my situation. They understand I have a time limit on my uh, case. And I feel abandoned by both the Ukrainian government and the British government. The sad story of the lads' army. That is what they called themselves, lads' army. Like, it was all a joke. It's as if they had no idea what they were getting into. But they did. I feel a need to protect the Ukrainian way of life, even though I'm not Ukrainian. The UK's support for Ukraine has so far been really good compared to other countries. I hope our Prime Minister and other MPs can push harder to increase support and give more equipment. Aidan Aslan likes a good fight. He was in Iraq fighting alongside the Kurds, likely got a taste for violence because soon after he wanted more, this time in Ukraine. I didn't have like the financial means to, to like go and start a new life completely. I was like looking at other options and I, I figured the best bet would be to go to Ukraine after I'd learned that uh, the Ukrainian military accepts foreigners. Sean Pinner also joined up raring for a fight, despite warnings from the British government, warnings not to go to Ukraine, that they could be prosecuted for terrorism if they return. But Mr. Pinner was so full of spirit. I am here defending my family and adopted city. Russia started this war. It's funded by Russia and driven by Russia. But we will fight them. Make no mistake about that. This is my ninth war tour. Death has been a part of my life for so long. You can't go into each day thinking you will be killed or injured. If this is not your conflict, you have no business volunteering to be in it. You know, we had uh, people here in the United States or we brought them to the United States who were uh, captured on the battlefield in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And uh, we, we treated them as, as mercenaries, which is what they were. They were uh, non-state combatants, hostile combatants, and they faced the full uh, power of, of the law.
And so if if you're an American or in, in the case that you cited, a Britisher or a Moroccan, and you volunteer to fight somebody else's war, then you're going to have to pay the price when you're captured. It's going to be very clear uh, to people who are entertaining the idea of going to Ukraine that there's nothing in it for them. They're, they're not going to get rich doing this. They're not going to come back uh, uh, with glory uh, from the battlefield. This is a no-win situation. They, they should mind their own business and stay away. In the United States, we call people like this glory hounds, people who, who feel like they've wasted their lives and want to be able to tell their children and grandchildren stories someday. It's almost always a bad idea. But apparently neither Shaw nor Aiden nor others bothered to reckon with the consequences. Mercenaries are not afforded protections of the Geneva Conventions. They are officially not prisoners of war. And the law of the Donetsk People's Republic allows for death sentences for murderers, for example, for mercenaries. Ergo, they're also very sorry that it turned out this way. I probably would have tried to uh, not join the military and try to get into like a civilian way. I'm hoping the people of Donbass and the judges like can forgive my actions. I hope, I really hope that uh, I don't receive the death penalty so that I can go on to maybe help rebuild because there's going to be a lot of like help needed. For me, my war will be over. It's done. Uh, I'm 48 and, uh, and if, if we have a say and if there's no threat Three, three times in England, you know, it's one, I've survived Mariupol, two, if I get through this uh, and I'm still alive, I'm not going to chance the third time, you know, it, it's, it's for me, it, it's done. The short and sad story of the lad's army, a bunch of guys who wanted an excuse to, to go and shoot and kill without consequences, which they apparently did for years and in multiple wars, and suddenly faced with a death penalty after all this time. They're sorry, and they should have known better. Well, one of the men, Aidan Aslin, had been briefly, briefly arrested on terrorism charges in the UK after he fought in Syria in 2016. Nevertheless, Britain's Foreign Secretary has now criticised the Donetsk sentencing, calling the court's decision illegal, while stating that London will do everything in its power to help the convicted Brits. Let's now cross to geopolitical analyst and blogger John Mark Dugan. Thanks for joining us on the programme. Now, following that pledge by Liz Truss, do you think there's anything the British and Moroccan governments can actually do to help these men, especially considering they've been convicted in the Donetsk Republic, which the UK and Morocco have no diplomatic relations with. Yeah, there's not a lot that they're going to be able to do, um, you know, unless they want to get involved in the conflict, which they clearly don't. But look, it was a legal and uh, um, it was a legal decision carried out by the courts. And uh, even though they don't recognize the uh, uh, the LDR and the, uh, the the Lugansk People's Republic and the um, Donetsk People's Republic, those are still the governments in charge in those areas. So, you know, whatever they say is, is what's going to happen. And there's not a lot that they can do about it. Now, obviously, the Donetsk court decided to hand down the harshest possible sentencing. Uh, what sort of message are they trying to send? Well, they're they're telling people, don't come here, mind your own business, because, you know, look, these people, they're sorry now because they got caught. And this is this is the way it always is. But they're not sorry when they're uh, engaging in crimes uh, against the people of the Donetsk Republic with uh, with the Ukrainian military. So what sort of precedent does this set for foreigners who are already already fighting or want to fight for Ukraine? Do you think they will be more hesitant about that now? You know, I don't know. Um, I don't know. You know, usually when people commit crime, they don't really think of the consequences before. That's why that's why in America you have such a high crime rate, even though the incarceration rate is so high. Um, but, you know, it's 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 a, a two way street. You know, even me as a journalist, I'm on Ukraine's kill list with a bunch of other journalists. And if we get caught there, they'll execute us just for reporting what's actually happening over there. So, you know, the the these governments like the uh, UK, US and all these other governments that are 
crying foul over this. They have no place. They have no reason to condemn uh, mercenaries when when their side uh, of Ukraine is is, you know, willing to execute journalists. And do you expect the convicted mercenaries to be able to successfully appeal their death sentences? Look, uh, I've I've met a lot of government people in um, uh, in these regions, and they are fair in and and just people. Um, and I think that uh, that being said, the court system there it's going to give them any rights that they are entitled to. But that being said, um, you know, unless they can show that they're not guilty somehow, which I don't think they can. Um, then they're going to be sentenced and that punishment will probably most likely be carried out unless there is some kind of leniency. Many thanks for talking to us today. John Mark Dugan, geopolitical analyst and blogger. Thank you. Thank you.